everyone. I'm Gus. I'm a, I'm a IPFS steward. I mostly work on Kubo. Um, so we're going to talk about the, the public DHT. Um, so to review what, what Juan was talking about, um, the main functions of the DHT are, content, are like converting a SID into a, into a set of pure IDs. We actually look it up by the multi-hash. Um, it also, the DHT also holds uh, pure ID addresses um, and IPNS records. Um, and we, these are the main implementations. So we've got two Go implementations that we use in Kubo, the standard client and then the accelerated full RT client, um, which I'll talk about in a second. And then the JavaScript and REST implementations. Uh, so some, some like high level stats about the nodes on the, uh, on the network. Um, you can see we've got some good distribution across the autonomous systems, which for people who don't know, that's the, those are like groups of IP addresses used for BGP routing. Um, and good distribution across cloud providers. Uh, these are the, these guys right here are the user agents that we see. Um, I actually don't know what IOI is. That's a new one to me. I think we're still trying to figure out what that is. Um, so 70% is Kubo, 5% of the Hydras, which I'll talk about in a second as well. Um, so the, the Hydras are something that PL runs to help speed up content routing. Basically, we, we have um, a bunch of peer IDs, basically flood the whole network with a bunch of peers that share a, a database that stores content routing records so that a lot of peers in the network know a lot about um, all the all the records. Uh, so I, we tuned it a couple months ago so that 97% of DHT queries hit a Hydra, Hydra node. Um, so that results in really high performance uh, responses, but it also means that we're basically sibling the network. Um, uh, and it also enables us to bridge the, the network with existing clients, uh, with other indexers, like the one that Andrew will talk about in a minute. Um, another benefit of the Hydras is that we get a really good global view of the DHT because we basically are the DHT. Um, so yeah, there's two, two main clients in Kubo that we use, the traditional client, which, um, does you know the lookups that Juan was talking about, the logarithmic hops. Um, and we've also got the accelerated DHT client, which uh, caches the entire routing table in memory, um, which means lookups are really fast because you don't have to do any extra hops, but it also means you've got to cache the entire routing table in memory. Um, and one of the big downsides of that is before it's even usable, you have to crawl the entire network and find all the peers. about 30 to 40,000 peers, something like that. Um, so this, this is a stat that we monitor that shows the, the time it takes uh, a random node in the network to look up uh, some content. And you can see over the past year, we did some work on the hydras, so it went down a lot. But currently, to look up a single record, it's about 160 milliseconds. It gets higher as you get towards the tail. Um, advertising takes a long time because you've got a lot of peers to send your records to. Um, and we haven't done any performance optimizations on that. Um, so, yeah, that's with the standard client. So if you use the accelerated DHT client, everything goes a lot faster once it's bootstrapped. Um, because you only have to you only have to make a request to one one peer. You don't have to do hops. Um, and provides are if you do a big bulk of provides, it's a lot faster too because you already know exactly who to provide those records to. Um, so yeah, these are some links. I can send this these slides out afterwards if you're interested in looking at these. These are different groups of people who collect metrics on the DHT. So Dennis has this nice crawler called Nebula. Um, or he publishes a bunch of statistics. Uh, I think they're daily now. 
um, about like who's on the network and how big it is and, and different performance characteristics. And then Max from libp 2 p he, he maintains the Rust libp 2 p implementation. He has a nice uh, Grafana dashboard. Um, I wanted to show too, let's see. So we also have, this is our Grafana dashboard for the Hydras. Um, just so you can get an idea of this, like how much work the Hydras are doing. So like, for example, th these are per second, I believe. Um, this is like average requests per second. So we, you know, we process a lot of requests on the Hydras, millions per second. Um, and you can see like down here, we've got, this is the size of, this is the number of uh, records that we've cached. So we've got around a billion records in the last week uh, that we've got in our database. Um, go back here. Yeah, so we've still got a bunch of work we can do on the accelerated DHT client as well. Like I mentioned, it caches everything up front, which kind of sucks because I've actually run it a few times and it's killed my router um, because it very aggressively looks up every peer in the network, uh, which is fine if you're running, uh, you know, some dedicated infrastructure for it. But if you're running it locally on your laptop or something, that's that's really is painful. Um, but I think we can we can get a middle ground where like basically it's just a cache of records, so we can. Um, uh, you know, we can, we can build this cache as we go. We don't have to do it all up front. Uh, so that's, that's one, one area that we can definitely improve. Uh, and then there's a bunch of constants in there that the Accelerate DHT client was, we didn't spend a, a whole lot of time writing it. So there's a lot of constants in there that we can research and probably improve on. Um, yeah, and then there's, then there's protocol limitations such as provider records. You can only tell someone else that you have a multi-hash. You can't tell them that somebody else has a multi-hash, um, which has, it creates a lot of difficulties. Like I, you can't split apart the system into two, two different, uh, like you can't say like, oh, that machine over there has this, this multi-hash. And also um, you can't, like if you could, like right here, if you could batch who has it with their addresses, you could reduce the chatter a little bit. Um, and then there's a, there's also, I think we talked about it earlier in, uh, in standup, there's a, there's a big lookup table that we use for bootstrapping the routing table. That's like 400 kilobytes. Um, that kind of sucks sometimes if you, it kind of bloats your, your code size. Um, yeah. <laughs>